In this video, we're going to talk about compressor side chaining. Now, side chaining is sometimes a little misunderstood. It can be a little tricky to wrap your head around initially, but uh, don't worry, we will explain exactly how it works and show you how you can use it. The basic idea of compressor side chaining is that you use an audio source to control the action of a compressor. Specifically, the volume of the signal running through the compressor is reduced as the volume of the side chain input increases. This has a number of uses. Uh, one of the most common is to briefly reduce the overall music program level every time a kick drum hits in EDM or techno music. This makes the kick drum appear louder than it really is because the music gets temporarily quieter every time the kick hits. So we're going to do a little A-B comparison to demonstrate this. So check out the track with no side chain, which is this. And now we'll play the track with the compressor side chain in. So you can hear there's definitely more impact with the side chain version. So let's have a look at this track that I made in Mixcraft, and I'll show you how it's set up. Before I start explaining how I did it, it's really, really important that I point out that Mixcraft doesn't actually include a compressor with a sidechain input. You will need to get one. So the good news is there's a really good one that I used for this called Density Mark III, which is this guy right here, looks like this, and it is free, free, free. Who doesn't love free? So uh, I recommend that you go download this. It is called Density Mark III and it is from Variety of Sound. So I don't want to give a link in here because they tend to change and you might be watching this video in the year 2047. But uh, go get Density Mark III and install it and I'll wait. <laughs> All right, I'll assume you've installed it and we will move on. So what I have right now is a pretty conventional mix. I've got the kick, the clap, I've got a reverb send just for the clap, I've got a hi-hat, bass line, and a pad, and these just play through a standard master output like always. And what I want to happen is I want the kick drum to control the dynamics of everything else. So the easiest way to do that is to create a submix track and put everything on the submix track except for the kick. So I'm going to click on the plus track button here. I'm going to add a submix track. And now I'm going to move everything in there except for the kick drum and this send track because send tracks don't like being on submix tracks. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to drag that into the submix track. And you can see the little space right there. It shows it's in there. Drag that in and so forth. All right, so now everything's in the submix track. And if I hit play, it'll sound the same. Pretty much no difference except we've got a submix track here which acts as a master volume or mute or whatever. But the advantage is that we can put an effect on the submix track. And that effect is going to be our side chain compressor. Dun, dun, dun. Let's uh, click on the effects button here. And by the way, if you can't see that, you can move that guy sideways. That's a cool new Mixcraft 8 feature. So we can click on effects here. I'm going to go to, for me, recently used, Density Mark III. If it's not recently used, just find it in your big list. There's Density Mark III. Click on that guy to open it. And the very first thing we're going to do is make sure the side chain input's on. Where it says SC over here, that stands for side chain. So I'm going to put this on external, meaning that we're using an external track source up here. And then up here where it says side chain source, this selects what the actual side chain signal will be. So I'm going to click here and you can see all the tracks in the project right now. So we want to use that 909 kick. And you can see there's a submenu here where we can select dry, pre, and post. I'll explain what that is in just a minute, but for now, I'm just going to put that on dry. And that means that the signal is not affected by the mixer volume control or the effects in the mixer or anything like that. So let's choose dry. And now when I hit play, watch the dB reduction meter over here. This is actually how much the whole program is getting reduced by with every one of those kick hits. So I'm going to hit play. Okay, so it doesn't really sound very different right now, and there's not too much happening with these meters. So in other words, every time that kick hits, 
it's reducing the volume of the entire mix of all this stuff on the submix track by, oh, about 1 dB. So that's not very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the drive and range controls on here. And as I turn up this range, you can really see that dB meter kick in and hear it. Hear how that kick drum is really punching through? You can also see the VU meters are kind of going nuts. So you don't want to go too much because otherwise it's just going to be so much kick and so little music. So that's pretty good. And let me bypass this just to give you an idea of what it sounds like without it. See, everything's kind of more just milk toast and level. And I turn this on. Boom, boom, boom. Um, another thing to be aware of is this timing control over here. And this selects from some preset timing constants. And what that means in English is, uh, I believe the faster ones are over here and the slower ones are here. So with the slower ones, you're gonna hear that kick drum sort of uh, recovers more slowly. Let me play it for you. Like here, everything's a lot quicker. That kick drum affects it more quickly. If I turn this up, it's a little pumpier because the recovery isn't as quick. But for our purposes, this P3 is pretty good. All right, so before I said I was going to talk about this uh, dry versus pre versus post fader business over here on the sidechain source input. And what that means is uh, with dry, that means that the kick drum signal coming into the compressor is not affected by anything in the mixer. This means that the fader level over here, which is the same as the volume over here, is not going to affect how much signal gets to uh, the sidechain input. And I can demonstrate that by hitting play and turning the kick way down, our mix is still getting compressed. See if I bypass it, now it just sounds normal. And now you can hear that kick drum, even though you don't, well, you don't actually hear the kick drum, but you can hear the effect that it's having on the mix. So let's bring that back to normal. And our next choice here is pre-fader. Now this is basically the same thing as dry. The primary difference here is that anything that's in the effects over here, like if I had a delay or a compressor or an EQ, that all gets factored into the signal as well. So depending on what kind of effects insert you're using, it may or may not affect uh, what it sounds like. Primarily, if you've got something like a reverb or a delay or something, you're, you're certainly gonna hear the effect that has on the sidechain signal. Another thing to think about is if you've got like an EQ inserted in there, if you turn down the amount of bass in the kick drum or whatever the signal is, that will drive the compressor in a different way. So it's worth experimenting with, but for most purposes, dry and pre-fader are pretty similar. Now down here we have post-fader, and as you might have guessed, this means that the fader amount actually affects how much signal is going into the sidechain. So uh, if I hit play and I turn this down, you can see there's nothing happening with gain reduction. If I turn it up, the more I turn it up, you hear that kick more and it has more effect on the sidechain. Here's another common application for sidechain compression. In this example, I've got an acoustic guitar track and a vocal, and these are just playing to the normal output as usual right now, so let's have a listen. I heard you were skipping down. Well, I heard you'd been around. So what we're gonna do with this is every time I'm singing, it's gonna turn down the volume of the acoustic guitar a little bit with the sidechain compressor. So the way we're gonna accomplish this is we'll put the Density Mark III compressor on the acoustic guitar track, and then we're gonna use the vocals as a source to essentially turn down the volume of the acoustic guitar while I'm singing. So let's open this guy up. And again, I've set this to external, and the sidechain source is the vocal dry, and I've already got all the controls cranked up here. So check out what happens. I heard you were skipping down Well, I heard you'd been around But you're gone now Yeah, you're gone now This is commonly referred to as ducking, and the most common application is when an announcer is talking over music. If you've ever heard a radio or TV commercial where every time the announcer talks, the music gets quiet, that's exactly what they're doing. They're using a sidechain compressor to automatically turn down the volume of the music. But there are a lot of cool applications for this in mixes. 
pretty much any time you want a certain element of a mix to pop up in volume, you can use this trick. It's useful for uh, guitar solos or really any kind of instrumental solo where you want that solo to really pop through and turn down whatever else is going to possibly overwhelm it.